Okay, so at this point, we know that the internet connects a lot of different networks together. And those networks consist of a lot of different types of cables, from coax to cat5. Those cables can run short distances. Those cables can run incredibly long distances under the ocean. I've got these wireless connections that also uh, connect me to the internet. So I have some idea of how the internet is connected together physically. But what is actually being exchanged over those connections between the computers that are part of the internet? So what we need to do is talk about what a packet is. The packet may be a fairly intuitive concept to you, but when this idea was introduced, it was actually incredibly revolutionary. So let's start off by just defining it. What is a packet? So a packet is a fixed size unit of data. So a pack, and, and there are lots of different types of packets, but a particular type of packet is usually defined to hold a certain amount of information and no more. And so what happens on the internet is normally when I exchange data between two computers, the, the data that I'm sending actually is too large to fit inside a single packet, right? And so what do I do at that point? So let's say I have a picture here of a friend of mine uh, who looks a little bit ghost-like, I guess. Um, and let's say I want to send this picture to another computer on the internet. So what happens is my computer takes this. This, this, is, this is way too much data to fit inside a single packet. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this picture and I'm going to break it up into a bunch of different packets of information depending on the network I'm using that will determine the size of these. And each one of these packets now gets independently transmitted over to the receiver. And the receiver is responsible for taking all of these packets and reassembling them into the image that I sent. And the idea of sending these packets in this way allows me to do a variety of different things. It allows me to uh, correct for errors. It reflects the fact that communication on the internet is fairly bursty. Um, and it, this is something that we're, I think we're so used to. I think we're, we've seen uh, you know, the number of packets that our computers exchange. We have some idea that this is going on. But again, when this idea was introduced, it was completely revolutionary. So much so that it took decades for this idea to actually start to be introduced into modern networks. Um, but now packets are, uh, packets are everywhere. Packets have taken over. Packets are even being used to transmit data um, that uh, people initially thought would never be a good fit for this type of data transmission uh, approach. Um, the two people, you know, and this is sort of uh, one of the key ideas that gave birth to the internet. Uh, the two people that deserve credit here are Paul Barron and Donald Davies. Uh, two researchers independently came up with this idea um, you know, a, a few years apart. Donald Davies gets credit for the term packet, which is obviously incredibly intuitive. Uh, Paul Barron called these message blocks, I think, which doesn't quite have uh, the same ring to it. Um, one of the early signs of sort of comedy and collaboration on the internet was the fact that these guys were really happy to share credit with each other. Um, Donald Davies actually was the one whose ideas were noticed by some of the people who started to build the first ARPANET. And so they were using some of his ideas, but he was very happy to point out that Paul Barron had come up with this idea, and Paul Barron was very happy to share credit with Donald Davies as well. So these two uh, people sort of really helped uh, uh, give birth to this idea of packet switch networks, which really is one of the core concepts that drives the internet.